Hello students. On behalf of my colleagues from the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome you to our department. My name is Bogusław Kruczek. I'm one of the professors and currently the chair of the department. First of all, let me congratulate you because by listening this presentation means that you have accomplished a lot in your high school years. You're entering a very challenging yet very rewarding program. And in the next few years, you will accomplish a lot. We are here to help you in this crucial stage of your education. You're a very special group of students. You were the first ones who graduated from high school online. You were the first ones who are entering university remotely. The list of first could go on. Simply, you are the pioneers. In the next few slides, you will get a lot of concrete information about our program. But let me take a moment to talk about big picture of chemical engineering. The term chemical engineering is often confusing to many people, including my family and friends. People think that chemical engineers are only connected to the chemical industry. Yes, we are connected to the chemical industry, but this is only a very small part of what we do. So what do we do? Our to-do list is pretty full. We do math, science and engineering in order to make environment sustainable, water drinkable, air breathable, medicine accessible, systems affordable, safety reliable, discoveries scalable. We make inconceivable feasible. So what do chemical engineers do? We take things that have never been done to get them done for good. Chemical engineering is therefore an intersection of many different fields, including materials, energy, food, environment, medicine, pharma. The list could go on. We are truly a multidisciplinary field which connects to any industrial research and economic sector. Chemical engineering is also an excellent base for high level uh, leadership positions. An interesting fact you may not be aware, an unusually large proportion of our graduates end up working as executives in financial institutions. For example, one of our graduates is the vice president of NASDAQ Composite in New York. You can ask, how is it possible? The answer is simple. As chemical engineers, you will understand both systems and processes. And this is a very attractive background for high level leadership positions. The sky will be a limit for you. However, let's go down to earth and let's focus on some critical information to get you going through our program. Therefore, I will let Professor Thibault to tell you more about what is ahead of you in the next few years. Thank you very much. All the best. Good day, everyone. My name is Jules Thibault, and I'm currently the Associate Chair for Undergraduate Studies. It is a great pleasure to welcome you all to the Department of Chemical Engineering and the University of Ottawa. I am positive you will enjoy the four to five years you're going to spend at the University of Ottawa, and hopefully all students and staff will be allowed to return to campus soon so that you can fully benefit from the dynamic, the diverse, and the warm community that the University of Ottawa has to offer. As you embark on this educational journey, which will contribute to shape the thinker, the entrepreneur, and the citizen you are destined to be, you have the responsibility to take your study seriously in order to make a difference in this world. 
My role today is to provide you with a brief description of the chemical engineering program that you will all have to follow in the years to come. As for all engineering programs, you will find that the chemical engineering programs will be challenging at times, but through hard and assiduous work, everyone can succeed. The chemical engineering program is typically divided into four years or eight semesters. Each semester, students will take between five to six courses for a total of 42 courses over the four-year period. Each course is considered as three credits or three units, which the exception of one course, which is the final capstone engineering design course, which has nine credits. In total, a student will have to complete 132 credits for their degree. Out of these 42 courses, or 132 credits, 36 courses, or 114 credits, are compulsory. That is, more than 86% of your program is already set for you. The remaining 6 courses, or 18 credits, are elective courses. 4 technical electives, taken mostly from chemical engineering courses and two complementary electives. This is for the standard program of chemical engineering. However, additional ramifications to the chemical engineering program exist. The chemical engineering program has two options. The first one is the environmental option, where all four technical electives must be taken from courses related to environmental engineering, including one civil engineering course, CVG 2132. The second option is the engineering management and entrepreneurship option, also known as the administration option, where the six electives are divided into two technical electives and four designated administration courses. In addition to these two options, the chemical engineering program has two companion programs. The first one is the biotechnology program, where in five years or more, one can obtain two distinct four-year programs, a BASC in chemical engineering and a BSc in biochemistry. The second companion program is the computing technology option, where one obtains a BASc in chemical engineering and a BSc in computing technology in five years. These two companion programs are very popular and provide additional tools to your engineering toolbox. It is important to take your courses in the right sequence such that you do not want to skip a course one year because this course may be a prerequisite for the next course in the program. This slide shows the sequence of courses in the program. The red rectangles are chemical engineering courses and the gray rectangles are the technical elective courses. In the first year, you'll have two chemical engineering courses. The other courses being chemistry, physics, and mathematics. In your second year, you will have four chemical engineering courses, whereas in your third and fourth years, the majority of your courses will be chemical engineering courses. The same course sequence appears on the website of the University of Ottawa, and a copy of this slide is included in the document that was sent or will be sent to you using your UOttawa email address. In chemical engineering, all professors and staff members are committed to help you to succeed. Remember that you're not alone, and please do not hesitate to seek help when you experience some difficulty with some part of the material seen in your courses. I know I can speak on behalf of all members of the department, to say that everyone will always be happy to see you and help you in your program. Once more, welcome to the Department of Chemical Engineering and to the University of Ottawa. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Wagner and 
I'm a student here in the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering. Bonjour, je m'appelle Ben King. Je suis un étudiant ici dans le département de génie chimique et biologique à l'Université d'Ottawa. Bienvenue à votre nouveau campus. We're here to show you some of the important places that you're going to be visiting for the entirety of your undergraduate degree once you're back, of course. Viens avec nous. We are now on the fourth floor of the Colonel By building, located on the south side of campus. Here you will find the offices of your professors as well as the graduate student administrative staff. Some offices can be found on the mezzanine floor which are accessed using this elevator. Sur l'autre côté de ces portes est le laboratoire du premier cycle. C'est ici où vous allez découvrir comment les conseils de vos cours de première et deuxième année sont appliqués dans les procédés industriels comme la distillation et les filtrations. La vidéo avec nos collègues Mathieu et Emily a des informations supplémentaires. In the basement of Colonel Bai is your engineering student society. They are responsible for organizing faculty-wide social events and monitoring academic regulations. Check out the website and social media for more information. Dans ce corridor est l'association des étudiants en génie chimique. Ceci est votre association départementale. Ils sont responsables d'organiser les événements sociaux, professionnels et académiques plus spécifiques aux étudiants en génie chimique et en démarche de vente. Assurez-vous aussi de dire bonjour à votre équipe exécutive et cherchez les autres associations comme les Femmes en sciences et génie et les Ingénieurs sans frontières. The site building houses a ton of classrooms and study spaces and is connected using the CBY covered skyway. In the basement of the building, you will find the faculty's IBM computer lab that you will be using primarily in your third and fourth years. On the first floor, you can find the Tim Hortons and cafeteria. Both this building and Colonel Bai are your two main engineering buildings here at UOttawa. Et avec ça, nous sommes à la fin de notre tour. Nous espérons que vous avez une meilleure vue des endroits importants et réseaux disponibles quand vous êtes de retour sur votre campus. Bon courage à vous avec votre premier semestre d'université. In this presentation, students will show you few of the units of your third and fourth year laboratory courses. They are located in the pilot plant in which you will go to learn about the theory and the operating of units in chemical engineering. Filtration is a unit used to remove particles or other matter from a liquid by sending it through a filter paper, a membrane, or a bed of particles. It is essentially what you do when you strain pasta from water. Filtration is commonly used in the wastewater industry to remove contaminants or solids from wastewater and let the clean water pass through to then be reused. Filtration is a unit that you're going to learn about in your fourth year of studies and you will also apply that knowledge in your fourth year lab. Fluidization is commonly used within chemical engineering when you want a good mix between a solid and a liquid. You can have two or three phase fluidization based on a combination of fluids and solid particles. One of the common applications for fluidization is within the food processing industry where you can use it to dry foods or freeze foods. As a chemical engineering student at the University of Ottawa, you'll start using the equations behind fluidization and seeing fluidization in your second year fluid mechanics class. Absorption is a very important gas-liquid separation process. In this unit, a certain solute in a gas stream is removed into a liquid stream by sending the two together into a column that is filled with packing. Absorption is a unit that is commonly used to extract CO2 from the combustion of fossil fuels to limit greenhouse gas emissions. You will learn about this unit in your third year of studies and then you will apply that knowledge in your fourth year lab. Distillation columns are one of the most commonly used units within chemical engineering. They work by separating components based on their relative boiling points. One of the common industries that distillation columns are used in is the petroleum industry, where they're used to separate hydrocarbons in the production of fuels. As a student in chemical engineering, you'll start to see the theories and equations behind distillation columns as early as your second year in chemical engineering. Hello everyone, my name is Zoya and I'm going into my fourth year of electrical engineering at the University of Ottawa. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the facilities at the Faculty of Engineering. So first off, let's start with the Undergraduate Studies Office. The Undergraduate Studies Office offers many services, starting with academic advice, advice on course sequences and how to adjust your course sequence if you need to, advice on registering for your courses and enrolling, or dropping or swapping, advice on academic rules, 
changing your program if you feel like you need to, and they offer many forms for things like changing your program and course sequences and so on. The workshop is the Engineering and Computer Science Mentoring Center. They offer things like individual consultations with mentors, group discussions with mentors, study groups for specific courses, and workshops. Mentors will communicate with you on a weekly basis and they know where most student services are so they can help you find any resources you need on campus. We also have this upcoming project where you will be getting a personalized mentor. The Engineering Peer Connect program is an opportunity for you to meet students, make new friends, network, and socialize with other engineering and computer science students. It is a volunteer-based program and students need to register to participate. The faculty will be pairing students from all levels with other students based on their interests. When you're paired with a student, you can interact with them however you choose to, whether it's in person or through social media or many other platforms like MS Teams or email and Yammer and whatever works best for you. Watch out for an email from us. The registration will be the end of August 2020, so it will be available soon. We have many student clubs and associations at the faculty. I was a part of one myself called WISE. As you can see, it's the Women in Science and Engineering. All students are welcome to join any club or association that they find interesting, whether it's building a highly fuel efficient or off-road vehicle to designing a human hamster wheel for a museum display. There are many options to choose from. So if you are interested in working in a team or getting creative, then join one of our clubs and you can work on these exciting projects. SEED, or the Center for Entrepreneurship and Engineering Design, offers student competitions all year round, design courses so you can work with real life clients, design spaces and facilities that I'll talk about soon, and an entrepreneurial ecosystem so that you can develop your business skills and learn more. The buildings you see here offer different facilities and different spaces for students to use throughout the semester. Starting off with the STEM building, which houses most of the SEED facilities, SITE, which is the engineering building for electrical engineers, computer engineers, and computer science students, CDY, the Colonel By building, which is for civil engineering students, mechanical students, biomedical mechanical students, and so on, and the ARC building, which is the advanced research complex where most masters and PhD students do their research. Here we have some of the facilities that you'll find in the STEM building that you saw earlier. The Brunsfield Center is a student-led machine shop where staff and students can work with traditional manufacturing equipments like mills, lathes, bandsaws, drill presses, even welding and fabrication tools once you receive your proper training. It's open to all students who complete their training, which is offered by the Manufacturing Training Center. The Makerspace and the Maker Lab are both also in the STEM complex. The Makerspace is a place that allows everyone to collaborate and build their own projects. It's open to students, community members, and it's open to anyone who would like to invent, make, build, play, whatever they can think of. The space is organized by students from different fields of studies at the faculty. The Maker Lab offers a course-based laboratory setting focused on rapid prototyping technologies. The university courses can include lab sessions at the Maker Lab to give students a structured experience learning about many of the technologies available at the Makerspace. The Simon Nam Design Commons is a reconfigurable space that offers whiteboards, markers, couches, computers, it is a space that is open for everyone to meet in and the space that fosters creativity, design and all different kinds of ideas. The John McIntyre team space is a space that offers tools for students in teams so they can work on their projects that you will see next. There are many competitive teams at the faculty and most of these teams compete in diverse international competitions. There are teams that work on rockets, cars, electric cars, urban cars, concrete canoes for civil engineering, formula for all programs, bionics for biomedical mechanical engineers, and so many different aerospace engineering teams as well. 
Undergraduate students can also pursue opportunities in research by applying to the Europ scholarship. This scholarship is worth $1,000. It helps you gain 50 hours of work in research between October and March, and you'll be supervised by a faculty member. The application for the scholarship is open as of August 1st, 2020. The co-op program just might be the solution you're looking for if you want to work and study which gives you more experience after you graduate. There's a 96% placement rate for most engineering students at the faculty, especially considering the tech hub in Canada. The salaries range between 18 and $22, and University of Ottawa is the number five largest university co-op program in Canada. The co-op program works like this. Study terms and paid work terms alternate. You end up with a degree and a year or more of practical work experience. During this time of increasing globalization and automation, most employers are seeking to recruit students who have the employment skills and values of a global citizen. In response to this growing interest, the University of Ottawa decided to launch UO Global Recognition. This is a program that aims to guide the development of your employment skills that are valued around the world, such as cross-cultural communication, innovation, adaptability, and so much more. Since these are changing times, these are some of the departments that can help you with your virtual transition into the university, such as the Career Development Center, the Student Academic Success Service, or SAS, and Student Life. Thank you for being here. You can also join us for a live Q&A session on September 8th. We'll be sending you more information via email, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a PhD student here in the Department of Chemical Engineering and I did my undergraduate degree here as well. I got to know a lot of the staff pretty well, so I'm here to introduce some of them to you today. Starting with the professors. First, Dr. Baranova. She mostly teaches courses to the French stream of the ChemEd program. However, you may find her should you choose to dive into the world of electrochemical engineering. Dr. Baranova may seem intimidating at times, but she is super approachable and will always be there to help you even while she's off exploring the world, which is one of her favorite pastimes. Dr. Sao will teach you some of your third year classes, and maybe again in fourth year if you take his elective course. Although some of those classes may be complex, he is always straightforward regarding his midterm and exam expectations, which will help you succeed. His lectures are sprinkled with jokes, funny anecdotes, and cheeky comments, so be sure to listen well in class. Dr. Dubé is from Welland, Ontario, and started his teaching and research career pretty young, and has been with the department likely since before you were born. He was here since 1996. He's been teaching the first year fundamentals course and the third year stats course in French, and is teaching a new leadership course at the graduate level, but it could soon be offered to fourth year students. He plays hockey in his free time, loves music, except for country and hip hop, and enjoys spending time with his family. His daughter is an undergraduate student too at the University of Ottawa. Dr. Fautou Lefebvre is a U Ottawa graduate and joined the department in 2017. You will probably have her as a professor multiple times throughout your studies, as she teaches a wide variety of courses. Dr. Fautou Lefebvre is an enthusiastic and kind teacher that will always go the extra mile to help her students succeed. One of her favorite pastimes is skating on the canal with her lab group during the winter time. After completing his PhD at MIT, we are excited to welcome Dr. Huberman back home to Canada to join our department. We're sure you'll be seeing him throughout your undergraduate career as a new professor in our department. Many of you will meet Dr. Kruchek in your second year, and you'll have many chances to meet him in higher level courses as well. He's always got a smile and cheerful greeting when you say hello. His courses may be tough, but you always know he wants you to succeed. Dr. Land teaches some of the third year courses in the chemical engineering department. He's an enthusiastic teacher and will definitely keep you on your toes. Dr. Land is very kind and will always be open to having a conversation with you, whether it be about your studies or life in general. You may meet Professor Lessard in your third or fourth year. His research in organic electronics has recently won him a prestigious award. He makes his lectures fun by cracking jokes, and sometimes they're even funny. 
If he's not busy taking care of his kids or chasing after his students for lab results, he's probably updating his Instagram. After having even one conversation with Dr. Mackey, you'll know just how proud he is of his son. He loves to talk about him. He teaches a number of core courses in the French stream and is always happy to help you with your course material. Score one for Canada as we welcome Dr. Meek to our department from the United States. As another new professor, we're excited to welcome her to enjoy the humid summers and frigid winters of Ottawa. Her interests lie between organic electronics, polymers, and renewable materials. Dr. Marani joined the department in 2006 and is the Associate Chair of Graduate Studies. You'll probably meet her in one of your second or third year courses. Dr. Marani holds high expectations, so she's tough as nails, but she's super helpful. You'll come out of one of her classes knowing the course material well enough to teach it yourself. Dr. Sophagianicus, or George as his students call him, is an avid runner. He really cares about his students and they love his lecture style, which you may get to experience in your second year courses. Anyone who's had a chance to chat with him will tell you he's incredibly approachable and easy to talk to. Dr. Sawinski is a UOttawa graduate and joined the department as a professor in 2018. He'll likely take advantage of your smartphones in his lectures by making interactive quizzes and polls. You'll likely meet him in your first year and you might be lucky enough to have him for your fourth year plant design course. Dr. St. Pierre is another UOttawa graduate. He joined the department in 2017 and has been busy with his biomaterials lab since then. He loves to discuss anything biology related for those interested in the topic. You might meet him in one of your first or fourth year courses. Dr. Taylor is Vice Dean of Engineering and typically teaches third and fourth year courses. His courses are famous for being some of the toughest in your degree, but don't fear him. He's always there to help. When he's not finding novel ways to deliver his courses, he's either pursuing his passion for photography or planning his extremely stylish outfit for the next day. Dr. Tezel is friendly and easygoing. She joined the department as an assistant professor in 1988 and became a full-time prof in 1993. After one lecture, you'll know why she's won an award for excellence in teaching. Be prepared to take all your notes down by hand when you reach her class in third year. Although her classes may be tough, Dr. Tesla will make sure to go over all the material in detail with many supporting examples in her chalkboard lecture style. Always remember her saying, the devil is in the details. Dr. Thibault is one of the most experienced professors in the department. He has a military background and is currently the Associate Chair of Undergraduate Studies. Anytime you go to his office, you'll learn something new so you can always count on him to help you out. Whether it's about your course material, your career, or something entirely new. Dr. Zhang is your go-to prof if you're interested in studying or working abroad. He's helped many students get scholarships and work placements around the world. He's always happy to say hello and meet new students. Franco, Gerard, and James all work in the department workshop. You'll mostly meet them if you take on a co-op or uh, a thesis during your studies, or if you decide to stay on for graduate studies. James is a technical officer in the workshop. James is the guy you'll need if you're looking to build or machine something for your lab. Be sure to come up with a comprehensive plan so he can make your wishes come true. Gerard is a technical officer in the workshop as well and works on many things related to electrical equipment used in the labs. If your thermocouples or lab sensors are on the fritz, you know who to go find. Franco is our senior technical officer in the department workshop. If you need something built, need something reorganized in your lab, or have questions regarding department lab equipment, this is the guy to find. Our office staff is also essential to our department's operations. Chantal is our new Senior Administrative Officer. We're happy to have her here and we're as excited to get to know her as you are. Francine is the Department Secretary. If you need to buy lab supplies or get reimbursed for something, she'll get you what you need, provided your supervisor approves it first.